everyone and welcome back to my channel. Do interiors make you sad? Do you think no? I am not doing any more interiors. Well today hopefully this video will help you and turn that frown upside down because I'm going to be giving you some interior design hints and tips. These will be great for Happy Home Paradise or if you've been putting off decorating your home then these will hopefully help you as well. If you like the sound of that please remember to like and subscribe and I'm going to go ahead and get straight into it today. For number one, I strongly suggest picking a colour palette for your build. This helps guide me through my build and decide what kind of furniture I'm going to use, what custom designs I'm going to use. It's also great for Happy Home Paradise if your villager has a bit of a kind of obscure theme and you're not sure what to do with it, then also kind of picking colours that are cohesive and go together can really, really help. What I've done here is I've set up two builds. They are both the same build, so both use the same furniture, but one has more of a cohesive colour palette and the other one is all higgledy-piggledy. I thought that this would be a nice way to just demonstrate to you guys that about picking the colours and the kind of tones that you go for can really, really help a build. I mean, it's a bit dramatic, but it definitely kind of shows you guys how a build can look nice and also not so good. There are a few different ways that you can do this as well. One of those ways is using shades of one colour. For example, if you wanted to do a blue build, you could use some lighter blue objects with the darker blue objects. About Animal Crossing, there is no kind of cohesive set of colours unless you're using one particular furniture. You may find a couple items that do go together really well, but um, majority of the time they are different shades, which can make it harder, but you should use it to your advantage and kind of mix those tones, mix those colours. Alternatively, you could use pops of colour, choose a base colour such as white, black, quite a neutral colour, and then just add in some bright, vibrant pops, maybe some yellow or some pink, something like that to really draw the eye and kind of set the attention on that particular item. Alternatively, if you're not sure what colours will go well together, I would definitely recommend looking at the complementary colour wheel. It's really helpful and kind of gives you an idea as to which colours will work well together and which ones don't. There are also so many colour palettes out there on the internet which will show you which ones look nice together and you might find a colour palette that you really, really like. It can also help you pick out your custom designs, um, so bear that in mind as well. I hope this kind of helps the colour palette can really really help make your builds look cohesive and lovely. The next thing I'm going to talk about is don't forget to add those little details. It's always been a great kind of design tip to kind of mix larger items with smaller items and you can definitely do that in Animal Crossing as well. Think about placing items on top of things so you might be surprised by some of the items that you can put on top of things especially now they've changed a few things since the update but putting things on top of wardrobes, putting things on top of tables and even on top of cushions. I love putting things on top of the zen cushions because they are great. You can put a cushion on top of a normal zen cushion and it looks adorable. Don't forget that because we're inside as well, you're doing interiors, it's perfectly fine to add in items of clothing. One of my favourite items to drop around is socks, shoes, hats. Why not go the full hog and put in a wardrobe if you want on the floor? But essentially, just find whatever small items work for you and fit with your build and hopefully they will help elevate the area without it feeling too cluttered because these little things can just make all the difference. The next thing I wanted to talk about is symmetry. Now, when I say symmetry, I do not mean create a mirror image. That could be a bit boring, but if that's what you like doing, that's fine also. But my hint and tip is kind of, use symmetry in the placement of your items rather than putting the same items down. So for example, with the seating areas, put a chair either side of a coffee table or shelves either side of a TV like I have done here. But what I've done is I've mixed it up with the smaller items and also with the sofas. 
They are the same kind of colour, so they look cohesive, but they are different kinds of sofa, so there is still some interest there. This will help create balance even though the furniture is not exactly the same and also keep it kind of different and interesting and again it's looking at those little details that can really really help elevate your builds. For number four I'm going to talk about functionality. So when I'm designing sometimes I struggle and get to the point where I'm like I don't even know what to put in this room. So one of the kind of go-to thoughts I have is thinking about how the space can be used and what it will be used for. So for example, with bedrooms, maybe I'll add a vanity or a dressing area. For a living room, maybe I'll add a cozy reading area. This helps you decide which furniture to use, how you're gonna use it, and also helps you decide how you're gonna fill up a room, how you're gonna decorate it nicely. Because I know sometimes I definitely get to that point where I'm like, I don't even know what to do. So I'm sure you guys do as well, particularly with Happy Over Paradise where you have the different levels. You could have a room dedicated to a bathroom and obviously work around that. You don't have to divide the rooms up anymore. So that'll be nice. So for number five, we're going to talk about themes. I definitely find picking a theme or having a theme kind of prescribed to me by Lottie and Happy Home Paradise makes things easier because I know which furniture to use, which furniture to not use and kind of stay away from if I'm trying to create a cozy ranch kitchen like I am here using the counter chairs are probably not the way to go but if I want to use a sleek modern kitchen then these would be more appropriate so for example here um, the ranch chairs would obviously fit better so if we go ahead and use them but this doesn't mean that it, this isn't a general rule I have definitely seen builds where people have managed to make different kinds of furniture fit their theme um, and you can do different things that will help do that so for example changing up chairs and things with custom designs will also help kind of match your theme a bit better so for example I've gone for a nice kind of light airy design on the chair to help fit with this kind of whole aesthetic for the room which I definitely do think helps this kind of works alongside colour when you're trying to decide what furniture to use, what colours to go for. So I would definitely think about your theme when designing. It can really, really help and also kind of make it feel cohesive. I know it's hard if you don't have a lot of items, um, but just bear it in mind. Next up, I'm going to remind you, don't be afraid to use your custom designs inside they're great for outside and also inside i've covered a few videos on these including glow stickers and also there is a video on showing you how to use them inside this can include using the glow stickers on the walls obviously there's so many out there windows doors etc you can use tile mats inside and also custom designing the furniture so using custom designs on the stools or chairs or even like table runners it looks really really cute and can help elevate them particularly with the tile mats all you have to do is just go into your phone go into your custom design selection and then display here display as a tile mat and then you're able to kind of fully rotate it you can also use custom designs as wallpaper to do that all you need to do is click place on wall or you can do the same on the floor as well so that's just kind of a quick look into it um, but there is a whole lot more to it but please don't forget about them they can really help build on what is already existing in the game and help it look great The next thing I wanted to talk about is creating a focal point. I find that sometimes starting with a main feature or a center point for the room and then designing around it can really help guide me in the way that I'm gonna do the design. So for example, here I've done a fireplace, but this is just unlimited as to how you could use this tip. For example, you could make the bed a main feature piece, for example, in my previous videos, I've done like a four poster bed using the pillars and the drapery. The pillars and things kind of really do open up the options that you've got. So definitely recommend having a play around with them. 
but you could also use kind of a bath as a main centerpiece for example using the clawfoot bathtub that's a really pretty item or maybe even a jacuzzi would be nice as well there really really is so many different things you could do with this idea and you could really expand on it a lot And finally, my final tip for you is to don't scrimp on the soft furnishings. This is very much a tip that should be used in real life as well for when creating spaces. But this is something you can also do in Animal Crossing. I've put down a few different items that might help create kind of a softer feeling and help you create layers with your builds. So what we've got here is quite a few cushions, rugs. The round pillow is a 2.0 item, which is a really nice little addition. You can put things on top of it, which is great. And I'm all for that. I think the rattan towel basket is a staple and works great for bathrooms bedrooms just pretty much anywhere the new curtain item is a great addition as well but if you don't have that one and you do have simple panels you can kind of add in curtains that way or using the custom design glow stickers and then we've just got some more cushions again i've stacked the zen cushion with the normal cushion on top so these as i say they're really really nice little additions kind of similar to adding detail but in the way that the sense that you can kind of put larger items on them and mix them up that way really really nice kind of go-to thing for me so everyone, that's the end of the video. I really, really hope that this helped and maybe you'll think again when you say, I'm not doing those interiors. They are a lot of fun and trust me, they do take a little bit of work, but once you get the hang of them, it's so worth it and it's really, really nice to be able to create cozy little rooms in the game. So fingers crossed, I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon with another video. Bye-bye.